So in this tutorial I'd like to introduce you to image processing uh, using Octave and uh, uh, Octave or MATLAB. Uh, image processing is an application of uh, 2D signal processing. Very interesting field. You can see the results quite quickly with your own eyes. Um, you can apply these uh, to your photos um, uh, or to any pictures you draw. Um, actually you can just use a program like Photoshop or GIMP but I mean, it's, it's a little fun to uh, do this you know the hard way and see how things work anyway um, like I said it's an application of 2D signal processing and I won't really go into the math uh, if you're interested in the math just uh, ask in the discussion forums and I'd be happy to help you out okay um, it's enough to just use the tools directly so the first thing we need to know is how to uh, load an image in Octave and I'm going to attempt to load this image okay so let's first we need a variable obviously so I'll say image gray and I'm saying gray because you can see that the image at the background is is a uh, color image is a grayscale image right so image gray equals uh, the function's name is im read okay im read reads the image and I need to give the path to the image in uh, in single quotes okay so and this is images and sample one I need to remember that it's backward slash in windows so yeah so I've got the image next I need to have a way to see the image in octave okay so we have a function for that as well it's called I am show and using that we can see the image so I give the name of the variable in in parentheses okay and you can see the image now the next important thing is to understand uh, how images are represented in uh, in octave right or in in a computer rather so to do that let me just zoom in okay so just see one tiny bit of of the entire image one tiny spec okay and i guess this should be enough let's, let's just zoom in a little more okay you can see these you know these uh, blocks right these squares each of these squares is called a pixel okay a pixel is the smallest uh, point in any image just like you know uh, a, a, a set of points make a line in the 1d case in the 2d case a set of points as you can see make make up the entire image okay so that's a pixel and an image is image is two dimensions because uh, we need uh, one variable to tell me the um, horizontal axis so the the horizontal distance from the origin okay, if, if uh, considering that this top left corner is my origin and we need, an, need another variable uh, to give me the vertical distance from the origin so vertical distance horizontal distance will give me one particular pixel okay so let's just consider uh, call the horizontal uh, variable as x and the vertical variable as y so those are our independent variables two independent variables x and y and our function becomes f of x comma y okay so that's our uh, that is our um, 2D uh, 2D uh, signal. Now in a computer we obviously need to use numbers, okay? Um, and before I go to that, so what I told you what the independent variables are, right? So what what's what's the dependent variable? Uh, so the dependent variable is the shade of gray you see over here. You can see these squares have different shades of gray. So this is darker, or you know this one's lighter than this. This is closer to white, okay? And you know different shades, okay? So the dependent variable tells me the shade of gray so you use um, you so the function is like you know I have this x coordinate this y coordinate and I need to know the shade of gray at that particular uh, coordinate so the horizontal and vertical is my uh, independent variable and the shade of gray is my dependent variable and the shade of gray is what we see with our eyes okay but a computer cannot see a shade of gray it needs it needs to use numbers okay and even when we do our math we need numbers so what we do is um, we represent this uh, each shade using binary uh, using numbers and uh, what you see here is a grayscale image okay a grayscale uh, image and uh, this is an 8-bit grayscale image and what that means is each of those boxes you just saw okay each of those tiny boxes we just saw okay you can see these boxes each of these boxes is uh, represented by an 8-bit number okay and if you're familiar with um, a binary with the binary number system um, 8 bits uh, can store 256 values okay values from 0 to 255 okay um, 
so that means we can show uh, we can store 256 distinct distinct shade shades of gray okay so that's what it means so um this particular shade of gray um, this particular shade of gray will have one particular number assigned to it this will have another number and so on okay and the scale goes like this the number zero um, is used to represent the darkest uh, darkest possible black and the number 255 is used to represent the uh, represent white okay and anything in between is uh, you know it goes progressively uh, lighter from 0 to 255 okay so that's how images are uh, are uh, represented in numbers uh, using numbers so you have horizontal axis vertical axis and the point at that axis gives me the shade of gray which is represented by a number varying from 0 to 255 and this is for the 8 bit gray scale image format okay now we also need to know how you know octave stores this so octave stores this as a matrix okay it stores this as a two dimension matrix and we can use the function size to uh, know the size of the matrix so I will use the function size and give uh, the variable in parentheses and you can see this is a image of uh, this is a matrix having uh, 960 rows and uh, 280 columns okay so that's the that's also the resolution of the image okay so vertical and horizontal resolution anyway so that's what size gives us and it's stored in a matrix so um, I I'll have I, I can show you the matrix. So let's just see the first ten element, uh, first hundred elements, or ten cross ten. Okay, so image gray. We'll see um, row one to ten and column one to ten. Okay, and you can see these. You can see these numbers. So I guess this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so you can see hundred. The first hundred pixels from this particular square. So let me just do I am show again. And what I'm looking at is this. Okay, so I'm looking at this. Okay, I'm looking at the first hundred squares over here. Okay, from from you know the ten ten along the horizontal axis and ten along the vertical axis. And if you look carefully and apply what I just told you on how images are represented using numbers, this top left has the value of 146. Okay the pixel next to it is darker okay and i said you know lower values are darker and higher values are uh, brighter so since it's darker it should have a value less than 146 and you can see it has a value of 132 here okay uh, this has a value of 170 you know this is even lighter it has a value of 205 okay and so on okay and you can see that these two pic uh, have almost the same you know al in fact it's you, it's very hard to even distinguish okay you can see this square and this square it's very hard to distinguish so they have only you know they have uh, very c uh, adjacent numbers so we have just 153 and 154 okay and that actually tells us why 256 levels are enough you know we can't really our eyes aren't able to differentiate between you know 153 and 154 so you know that that's why that's the reason why you know 8 bit is more or less enough for our for, the, for our purposes okay so so that's how you know the image is stored in uh, in Octave or MATLAB. Okay, same functions work in MATLAB as well, by the way. So, but uh, most most of the times we are not uh, interested in grayscale images. We are uh, a lot more interested in color images. So the color image for this is this. Okay, this this is what we are usually interested in. So we would like to know you know how how our color images you know stored in uh, are represented in the computer. So. Uh, to do that we go back to a high school optics okay and uh, if you remember uh, we use uh, we use the th three primary colors okay the colors red uh, green okay and blue can be used to uh, you, you know if you remember from optics optics you can you know take the right shade of uh, red green and blue the three primary colors uh, superimpose them on each other and you can get any shade you want you just need to vary you know use the correct shade of red red the correct shade shade of the green and the correct shade of blue okay mix them together and you should you can get any um, color you want and that's exactly how any of your all your all of your screens work you take your mobile phone screen or your desktop monitor you know tft plasma or lcd any of them or you take your old CRT monitors they all work on the same principle you take the three primary colors use the right shade of them and mix them together and you can just do a small experiment if you're not convinced take three torches or three any three light sources 
and uh, cover the light source you know one with a, a transparent a red plastic and a, a green plastic sheet and a blue plastic sheet and shine them shine any combination and you will get various uh, you know various colors and you can you know somehow try to vary vary the intensity uh, of light and you'll you'll get even more colors okay so you can just try the experiment if you're not convinced so that's how that's how color color images are formed so I what i'll do is uh, to demonstrate i will actually load um, this image okay where's that image okay uh, i just lost it um, yeah so i can i'll just load this image into uh, octave and i will store this in image color okay and that will be equal to okay so i am sure i will use the same same function so i am sure um d images um sample 1 dot jpeg okay so jpeg images so i have got uh, I, i said i am sure sorry so this should have been i am read my fault okay so we've got the image and if we want to see the image uh, you can use i am show sure. and there you go so you get you get the image so next i'm going to attempt to uh, break up the three uh, the three components so what i'll do is i will create a variable called image red okay and i will assign this to image color okay um and before i actually do that Let, let's just see what size gives us so i'll say size image color okay and you can see that the first two uh, results are exactly the same you get this 960 you get this 1280 and that's exactly the same as the grayscale case because it's the same size the image has has the same resolution but you can see this extra dimension 3 uh, okay and um, this 3 represents three separate matrices and each of these matrices uh, uh represents one of the three components so you have one matrix for red in fact the first matrix is red the second matrix is green and the third matrix is the blue matrix and we will see each of these separately so let me say image red equals image color i will just assign this to image color directly okay and next what i'll do is i will say image um image uh, underscore red okay and what i want to do is i want to assign the uh, i want to assign the uh, green and blue components to zero like i said uh, the second matrix is green okay and i'll assign this to zero and the third matrix is blue okay and i'll assign that to zero as well okay and now let's see what we get if we use i am show so i will say figure 1 and show and uh, image underscore red okay and we should see an image okay so as you can see this is just red so this is my red component so i'll keep this to the side here similarly let's find the green component so image green equals image color again okay this time i'll have to uh, blot out you know uh, the first and the third matrix because the second matrix is green so 1 equals 0 and uh, part 3 should be equal to 0 again if i say uh, if i show this on figure 2 this is green i should see the green component perfect so this is the green component finally finally we want to see the blue component so i'll say figure sorry first we need the blue component so image blue equals image color and uh, image blue so what components i would need so if you want you can Uh, try to figure this out yourself. Uh, maybe you would want to pause the video, um, but I'm just I'll just go ahead. So obviously the first one needs to go because it's red, and the second one needs to go as well because it's green, and we'll be left with uh, the blue components. So figure three, I am sure, I am G uh, blue. Okay, and this should give me my blue component. Perfect. So like like I said, so. um color images contain three components okay in the rgb system so red green blue system that's what rgb stands for and uh, you can see that you have different shades of uh, red throughout the picture you have different shades of green throughout the picture and you have different shades of blue throughout the picture okay and um you know those different shades give us the different colors you see over here okay and uh, 
that's how images color images are represented in uh, uh, in, in a computer okay each of these uh, co uh, colors are matrices again and uh, that's that's how you know images are represented so what i've shown you so far is uh, similar to the time domain representation of signal so in the in the 1d case okay we had have we have a, our graph had you know uh, time on the x axis and the value of the signal uh, on the vertical axis okay so the time was on the horizontal axis and you know the value of the signals was on the vertical axis um, similarly what i just showed you was the spatial representation of images so the spatial representation is an analogous to uh, analogous to um, analogous to the time domain uh, representation in uh, in um, I in one D signals, okay. So just like you have uh, time domain representation in one D signals, you have spatial representation in uh, in images, okay. And just like you have the frequency uh, representation of one D signals using the Fou using Fourier analysis, you can you can have frequency um, the frequency representation of uh, of uh, images as well. So that's called the frequency um, frequency spectrum, right? So to before I actually show you the frequency spectrum of images uh, let's just go back to uh, let's just go back to the 1d case so what was frequency in uh, 1d frequency gave us a sense of how quickly or how rapidly uh, a signal you know uh, changes so if you take a sine sine function if you take a sine wave sinusoidal uh, wave and a high frequency sinusoidal function you know varies rapidly you know it changes very quickly whereas a low frequency uh, sinusoid varies very slowly okay and we can use a similar uh, uh, a similar uh, thought process for uh, images as well so i've just zoomed into the image over here and what happens in the 1d k uh, and what happens for frequency for images so like i said in 1d it's how fast uh, uh, how fast the you know image uh, changes its value uh, how, how fast the signal changes its value so in the images case frequency tells me how quickly the pixel changes its value so you can see over here uh, at this branch you know you can see a lot of variation in the pixel values and you know th there are abrupt changes as well so you can see this branch for example you know it's black over here and suddenly it goes on to white so this is like a high frequency region okay because there are ch quick changes in uh, pixel values but if I go to this water over here, you know, um, if I go to this water over here, you you see that you know there's not much variation. There are variations, but it's very less. Okay, so this is low frequency. Even this grass is relatively low frequency. Okay, uh, this road is pretty low frequency as well. Okay, so I'm not sure why it doesn't zoom where, where my mouse is. Anyway, so this is like low frequency as well. Okay and that that's what frequency is I in case of uh, images okay so it tells me how quickly the pixel uh, pixels vary to get the frequency of the of the image frequency spectrum of the image uh, we use a function called fft2 so it's called fft2 fft stands for fo fast fourier transform okay it computes what is known as the dft the discrete fourier transform of a signal Okay, the number two uh, represents the fact that this uh, this this function works on a 2D matrix. Okay, so we get the fast Fourier transform, and uh, um, the discrete Fourier transform is not actually the Fourier transform. It's it's a it's a discretization of the Fourier transform. So you can just look look this up. Um, we need to discre discretize the Fourier transform because uh, uh, we we cannot store continuous uh, functions in, in in a computer. Um, uh, Fourier transforms are uh, are continuous functions, okay, and uh, uh, I won't really get into details of this again because, like I said, I won't get into the math. Um, but if you're interested, I can you know I can explain further. Okay, um, th there is a function in for the 1D case as well, and I will discuss this when uh, we discuss uh, discrete time Fourier analysis in in lecture. Okay, so this is F52, and uh, I'll assign this to gray underscore frequency. Okay, and uh, I will get um, the 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 frequency spectrum. So let's just see the first. Let's let's just see the first uh, two columns and ten rows. Okay. So this is. Oh, sorry, my fault. What am I doing? Uh, gray underscore frequency. Okay. So you can see these are all uh, complex numbers, right? So this is something plus something i, 
uh, i stands for the square root of minus 1 okay uh, in math and in octave and uh, similar programs uh, i is also used in 6w2x we use j because uh, uh, i will stand for current as well and uh, we we wouldn't want to confuse between two variables okay so these are all imaginary quantities and um, we'll be interested in the uh, in the magnitude plot so to get the magnitude plot we'll use a function called absolute okay and we will say gray underscore frequency okay and i will get the magnitude so I'll just do a i will just see the frequency values now the thing is um, you can see these numbers are varying you know like something to the power of 4 and something to the power of 3 but again if you remember that the gray scale uh, can vary only from 0 to 255 okay so if i if i just said i am show i would get nothing and if i just do i am show over here i would get nothing i would just get you know everything white uh, so i need to i need this to vary from 0 to 55 for i am show or i can also vary it from 0 to 1 okay and uh, if uh, so if it's 0 to 255 and they're all integers i am show will work and it'll show the shades uh, the varying shades or it can be a number from 0 to 1 a decimal value okay and i am show will automatically stretch it to the correct gray level so to get the correct gray level what we do to get the correct range we use a function called i am adjust okay and uh, if you're on windows okay or uh, on a distribution in which this is not installed uh, automatically uh, i am adjust requires the uh, uh, image processing package of octave so you'll have to install that in order to get this uh, function so we'll use um, i am adjust and this time we should see um, the correct shades okay so i am adjust uh, varies the range of these of the matrix and it fits th fits it into 0 to 1 okay in the range 0 to 1 so this is the frequency spectrum of uh, of the image okay and uh, the the origin is you know at the corner so i want to center the origin so for that i will use another function called fft adjust okay uh, i want then i do that because i want to so it's called fft shift not fft adjust, adjust my mistake so what i want to do is i want to shift the origin from the corners of the image to the center of the image and i should get this okay so this is the fourier uh, transform of my image okay it's um, it looks somewhat random okay i wonder if this looks like a gaussian distribution uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure so this is my uh, fourier transform um this is um, it doesn't make a lot of sense so let's look at a, a simple image okay and i will use an image which is analogous to something we've seen in uh, 1d so this is a one dimension pulse okay it's zero here and then just jumps up to one stays one for some time and then just drops down to zero okay so that's our pulse I've taken this from the lecture notes, by the way. So, um, and the Fourier transform of this is, you know, this function. It's this function is called a sync, okay, uh, S I N C, okay, and it's equal to sine of x by x, okay. So that's the, this is the sync, okay. Um, let me just uh, increase the font size so it's a little more visible, okay. It's called the sync function, okay. Sync is sine x by x. Yeah, and it has the shape so it jumps up to one goes down to zero with a lower amplitude goes back to one with an even lower amplitude and it just decays off like that so the Fourier transform of uh, this pulse of this 1d pulse is this uh, sync okay so what's what's a pulse in in the images case so a pulse in an images case is this so if I just keep this uh, side by side so I keep this here and I keep this here you can see in in the 1d case it's zero jumps up to one and then goes back to zero so even in the image it's zero it jumps up to 255 which is the maximum value and then goes back to zero okay so this is my this is my two dimension pulse okay so um, we should expect that the fourier transform of this sh should be something similar to this okay and we will see that it actually is so first i'll have to load that image so i will say uh, i am image pulse equals i am read okay i am read of uh, this is in d images and this is pulse dot png i hope i'm right okay i'm right so it gives me the pulse and i, I can just show you the pulse you know so g pulse okay so should be able to see the pulse so that's my pulse and now i want the fourier transform of this so i will say 
um, I will just directly okay so I will say pulse underscore frequency equals to fft2 um, ing pulse okay but I also want to shift the origin to the center okay uh, actually I'll show you what happens if I don't shift it to the center so uh, pulse frequency equal to fft2 image pulse and to just see it I will say I am show I am adjust very important uh, absolute value of pulse frequency okay and we see this um, you can see these white areas at the corners okay so that's this is actually my origin I want the origin to be the center so that's why I, I need to use uh, FFT shift so I will just do that so FFT shift sorry shift this goes here and this goes here okay and uh, where did it go okay perfect so this is my uh, Fourier transform this is my 2D uh, pulses uh, Fourier transform okay and uh, okay so let just see oh, okay let's compare this with this uh, sync function so where's my sync okay let's just compare this with uh, sync so what happens in the sync so it goes up to this high value goes down and then you know the amplitude reduces and you can see that something similar is happening in the image so it has this huge patch of white similar to this big bulb uh, uh, this big peak over here and then as you move along the horizontal axis or the vertical axis away from this central origin you can see that the intensity decreases just like the amplitude decreases and you have these black patches in the center uh, I mean in between so which represents these uh, dips you can't have negative values because you have values only from 0 to 255 okay so that's my that's my uh, uh, let's call it the 2d uh, sync function okay so just just we'll just call it uh, the 2d uh, sync function okay and uh, um, frequency analysis has a lot of application in, in images okay when if you use Photoshop you know the blurring in image is like uh, a low pass filter so you are taking out the low low frequency components okay um, finding the edge uh, an edge detect is like a high pass filter okay so you're finding uh, you're finding the edge uh, edges of the image Be and it is it makes sense that it's a high pass filter because it is at the edge where you know the colors change rapidly or you know the and the, the pixel intensity quickly changes so it's a high frequency region so it will get filtered it, it will filter through uh, a, a, a high pass filter okay uh, a particular kind of transform called the discrete cosine transform uh, has application in the jpeg format which we are all uh, familiar with the jpeg image format which is a compression format so the discrete cosine transform uh, is used in one of the steps of compression okay the, there are several steps again if you're interested i can explain that as well so many applications of uh, image processing um, uh, if you if you if you are interested um, i would encourage you to open photoshop or gimp and try to you know look at some of the tools available there and try to understand how they work okay and uh, i will try to actually have uh, tutorials which explain how some of these functions work and and you know uh, once you learn more and more it'd be interesting if you can implement these yourself okay and uh, uh, and uh, like I said, image processing is quite interesting. I um, uh, hope you um, hope you find found this tutorial useful, and uh, please do explore uh, uh, Im image uh, image processing functions in uh, MATLAB yourself or Octave yourself. Okay, thank you.